Wait, Beginner's Guide okay. to the Lore of Honkai Star Rail? If you've clicked this video, you're probably thinking about playing Honkai Star Rail. And if you've seen yeah. any of the promotional material, you probably realize that it's a pretty story-heavy game. And story-heavy games... I didn't get that at all. ...tend to have a lot of new stuff to remember, especially sci-fi okay. games. Like nice this tits. one. And that steep learning curve often makes for a confusing first few hours while you wrap your head around what's going on and what it all means. Okay. But not this time. This time, dear viewer, you have me, Ashikai, Lauren and theory enthusiast to assist you. Ashikai is probably the best uh, lore channel for any any gotcha. You and understanding this brand new world of Honkai Star Rail. So this video is a gentle, most spoiler-free introduction to the world and lore of Honkai Star Rail. Spoiler-free! The idea here is to help ease you into some new terminology and give some more context for how the world within the game works so you're not totally blindsided and confused or overwhelmed when you pick up the game for the first time. Okay, so this is the lore. And then there's a difference between lore and the story. So the lore is the shit that the game doesn't tell you unless you look for it. It's like the shit that you find in like, like books and shit. Now I did say mostly spoiler free because there will be some minor spoilers for the first hour ish of the game just because the context is needed. But before we begin, I know a good chunk of you are probably wondering, do I need to play Honkai Impact 3rd to understand the story of Honkai Star Rail? If you say yes, I'm gonna be furious. Because, you know, they both have Honkai in the title. And the truth is, no. Thank f***ing God. No, you don't. While playing Honkai Impact may increase your enjoyment of Honkai Star Rail, the Why would it do that? Two games take place in entirely different universes. So even if characters in Star Rail share looks and names with characters from Honkai Impact, they're not the same people, so you don't need to worry about not knowing their backstories or anything. There is one exception to this rule, though, but we'll talk about him later. But if you are still worried that you might be missing out on some important lore or world building by not playing Honkai Impact, I will start this video by explaining the most relevant part of Hoyo's multiverse setup that carries over from the world building of Honkai Impact. It's short, and it'll probably get explained independently in Star Rail at some point anyway, but okay. here you go. Now, within Hoyo's multiverse setup, which I will now just call the Hoyoverse, okay. there are two primal forces, the imaginary tree and the sea of quanta. So it might be easier to think of them as the tree of order and the sea of chaos. It's a gross oversimplification, but I think it's easier for the unfamiliar people to conceptualize it this way, since the forces of order and chaos are generally at odds with each other, and the imaginary tree and the sea of quanta are trying to devour each other. What's with every game having a big ass tree? I will say this, I wasn't a fan of Genshin's lore, and the majority of Genshin's story was boring to me, but... It had very nice moments. Genshin for me was like, it was a very nice, like like ten percent moments. It was very 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 nice, and then like ninety percent. I guess you could call it build up to those moments. But I did enjoy the moments of Genshin, but not really the lore of the story, in my opinion. Now Elden Ring lore I love, but we'll see how Honkai is. Each other, so same kind of concept. Now, metaphorically speaking, the Sea of Quanta is basically this pool of infinite possibilities Why are we on a train? from which grows this imaginary tree, which takes those possibilities and orders them, branching Explain out in countless directions. The leaves that sprout at the end of these branches each contain an entire universe in and of themselves. How? And because these universes are part of this imaginary tree, they all operate based on the laws of the quote imaginary. That's so like okay, and that's like uh, that's like wealth damage. The imaginary. Okay, all right. So I'm guessing imaginary probably means something that we don't fully understand right now. At least my basis knowledge of the game it probably means that. So maybe we do big. Maybe imaginary damage just means like tree damage, and you throw like bark at them or some shit. So what happens if we set the tree on fire? Imaginary energy from the imaginary tree makes up the basis that is called Honkai. In but it's imaginary, but it's not actually imaginary. Honkai impact, but Star Rail just calls it imaginary energy. Okay. Imaginary energy is pretty important in Star Rail as eons and paths, which we will go over in a bit, are very powerful entities made up of imaginary energy. Okay. It basically makes the world go round. Regardless of how it manifests, though, imaginary energy is likely the reason why Honkai Impact and Honkai Star Rail share the Honkai in their names. But that's okay. really it. That's where the connections between the games Makes end sense. and where our introduction to the unique world of Star Rail begins. But if you're still worried you're missing out on something, I will leave a link to Island XD's Guide to Honkai Impact for Star Rail play. I'm not watching that, but they do have cute cats. Now, let's set all that impact talk aside and get familiar with the world of Star Rail. Okay. Let's start by... Bro, I'm so tired of the protagonist always looking just like completely... 
like emotionless. I hate that shit. I, I hope this game we can talk as the protagonist, but we'll see. Maybe we'll have a new Paimon variant. If, if I if I have some type of Paimon in this game, I'm gonna I'm gonna rip my brain in half. Talking about paths. Star Rail's universe is focused on this concept of paths, and those who walk a path are known as path striders. Makes sense. Paths are basically philosophical ideas given some kind of metaphysical form through the accumulation of imaginary energy, which makes okay. them incredibly powerful forces. By believing in and practicing the concepts of a chosen path, a person can draw on the powers of that path and become a path strider. Okay, now, like that's I cool. Said, a path is a philosophical idea or a concept. Those who follow. No, I'm pretty sure a path is just something that you like walk down. Follow a path, believe in its philosophy. For example, path striders of the path destruction may believe that the universe is a mistake and therefore must be destroyed. It was because the reality is, is that chat, we live in a timeline where we're not going to be able to have IRL cat girls because the world is banning DNA splice. But currently, we have the technology to blend pieces of a cat into people, and it's banned. So that's going to happen about 100 to 120 years, and we're living where we just all have to be attracted to gross-ass humans when we could have animal hybrids, uh, which is honestly very disappointing to me, but it is what it is. I'm very depressed. Anyways. However, mortals are not bound to any one singular path any more than they are bound to any one way of thinking. If their philosophy changes, their path can change as well. For gameplay purposes, paths manifest as a type of class, if you will. Those who follow the path of abundance, for example, might be considered to have the class of a healer or a cleric, while someone following the path of destruction has abilities more like a fighter or a berserker. Now, if one finds that- Bro, I can't wait to use Himiko's alt to kill like a cat. You take the big galaxy beam and you just like, you just blow up a cat, <laughs> you know? Like just completely overkill some dumb shit. Like bro, you're something like a galaxy beacon to kill little, little mittens over there. That's crazy. ...themselves completely committed to a path and manages to explore the deepest parts of it to truly comprehend it in its entirety, they may transcend their mortal form and become something known as an Eon. Okay. Now you'll notice I did not specify that the one ascending had to be human, and that's because they don't. Any sentient life form, whether organic or inorganic, has the capability of becoming an eon. So that includes things like artificial intelligence. As for what an Bro, don't tell me my stupid ass lost my memories again. Eon actually is, they are something like the embodiment Holy or shit, master of a path. While they're not traditional gods, they are beings of godlike proportions. To put it into context, they're kind of like an ocean, while a path strider is a mere droplet of water. Damn! And while they are ageless, they are not actually immortal, as they can be killed by either another eon or by ceasing to walk their path. Because remember, they're- Yeah, you know, this whole ageless bullshit, I hate it. Right, you're gonna see these freaks seeing the little healer girl and say, well, technically he's a dragon. So technically he's a thousand years old. Bro, you're f freaky bro okay this whole ageless bullshit stop it are the embodiment of their path so without their path they're basically nothing this means that an eon is forever bound to their path and they cannot stray from it the eon of destruction can't just wake up one day and decide to walk the path of harmony for example to become an eon you trade your ability to change for incredible power derived from one singular path you give up your ability to change wait so like the moment you give up your ability to change you follow a path yes for power to walk your path so it's like you you remain the same constant human that you are at that point or like the ability to change is in like the dumb on twitter who just like are just completely brainless and they don't have the ability to like grow as a human. No, just the, oh, just the ability to change path. Oh, okay, I get it now. Now, as godlike entities of cosmic proportions, an eon's interest in mortals may vary, with some right. eons choosing to meddle more than others, but ultimately the lives of mortals are small and inconsequential to them. Sometimes, though, a person with a powerful affinity or talent within a given path will pique the interest of an eon. This is known as drawing the gaze of an eon. Those who have been gazed upon by an eon become something called an emanator, which is kind of cool. like oh my the gosh, eon's will crazy. given mortal form. Emanators are extremely powerful and often attract other followers of the same paths. In doing so, they form something called a faction, which is really just a fancy way to group followers of an eon together under one kind of cohesive label. 
Okay. Now, though factions tend to follow the will of an Eon, forming a faction doesn't necessarily guarantee any sort of special blessing or assistance from the Eon, regardless of whether or not a faction contains an Emanator. In the end, factions are just people bound by a common way of thinking, so it's handy to know the philosophy of each Eon so and like their waves. path in order to understand the goals of their associated factions. That makes sense. Although, since factions are mortal creations, their understanding of their Eon's path can often be twisted or far removed from its original intended meaning. So it's like so it's like religion. Like when 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 like Christians say that gay people are evil or like when Chick-fil-A doesn't allow gay people to like eat their chicken, right? Uh here's here's the thing about religion, right? It's man-made. So like why hasn't there been like a balance patch? Cuz like I I'm pretty sure God would be like fine with gay people in in 2023. You know, I feel like they're, I feel like they're pro we're probably cool by now. Uh, I, I feel like we can probably wear cotton on our skin now and it not be a sin. Like, I, I really feel like the Bible needs some DLC at this point. Because, uh, honestly, the, the, the devs, the devs are really lacking right now. The meaning of things. Oh, the devs died? Things is pretty subjective, after all. Currently, there are 18 known eons, but only seven of these eons' paths are available to playable characters. Every Eon will play a role in the story at some point, and I will probably make a video going over all 18 at some point, but there are only two that we're going to familiarize ourselves with today. Those are Akavili, the Trailblaze, and Nanook, the Destruction. He's so hot. Akavili was one of those rare Eons that enjoyed mingling with mortals. In fact, they're considered to be the Eon that was closest to mortals. They were also responsible for laying down the rails for the Astral Express train system throughout the universe, and they invited mortals to board these trains. Those who did so joined the Trailblaze path and formed the faction known as the Nameless. Akavili would often adventure alongside Huge. their path striders, making them very unique among the eons. But I'm using past tense here because Akavili died in a mysterious accident that derailed the Astral Express and wrecked many of its train cars. Without the Astral Express, the Nameless also vanished. But as luck would have it, one of those broken trains landed on the planet Himiko was from. She managed to repair it, reforming the Nameless faction and making the Trailblaze path accessible once again. This is the Astral So Himiko is like actually like super important. Okay, that's awesome. Astral Express train car that we board as a player. Now, rumor has it that Akavili's heart is in the core that powers the Astral Express, and that's what allows the train to travel across the galaxy. Okay, so is there only one train, or is there multiple trains? Because that's probably important to know, or maybe we don't even know, right? There's one? There's only one? One for now? Okay, dude, that's... I really like the idea of, like, a space train. You know, I'm a big fan of the movie Polar Express. I think the aesthetic is amazing. It's like the limousine in Persona 5. Like, I... I with the symbolism a lot. But there's no evidence to support that claim. But there must be some level of truth to the nature of the core of the train, if only because without the power of an Eon, travel via the Express would be difficult for just a normal path strider. Unlike the free-spirited and benevolent Akavili, the Eon of Destruction, known by the name Nanook, believes that the birth of the universe was a mistake and desires the destruction of all civilizations. All right, so I'm gonna make a prediction, right? I'm gonna assume that the Trailblazer can walk multiple paths, hence explaining the normal path Trailblazer and the fire path. Their followers are known as the Antimatter Legion, or just the Legion, and actively attack civilizations with the goal of total annihilation. Nanook is the one responsible for the distribution of Stellarons throughout the universe, and Stellarons play a huge motivating role in Star Rail's story. So while we don't really understand Nanook's motivations beyond destroy everything, he is a key eon to pay attention to because of his connection to the Stellarons. That makes sense. I also love knowing how new this game is because Ashikai has been using the same B-roll over and over and over again for 10 minutes, and she's going to keep doing the same B-roll for 15 minutes. I am aware of these things. I am not tuning out your video. I'm still watching. So what is a Stellaron? Please explain. Well, a Stellaron is widely believed to be a seed of destruction created and distributed by Nanook the... That shit looks like chat GPT. The destruction. They're also called the cancer of all worlds. Nah, that's Twitter. These seeds fracture reality and spawn rifts that lead to interdimensional spaces called fragmentums, and those attract monsters, so you can see why that would be problematic. Problematic. Uh, I don't watch tech because he's problematic. God, I hate the word. Yeah, you're damn right. You know what your real problem is? Me knocking you the out. Erda claims that Stella I will massacre you! Stellarons are actually a type of life form since they do appear to have some sentience and have been known to communicate with those of a certain aptitude. 
She also claims that Celerons can tether themselves to an eon's path, and that they are capable of responding to the cumulative desires of a world or planet that it happens to find itself on. That's a lot. In certain circumstances, it can even fulfill those desires, but that comes at a cost. Stellarons are the seeds of Nanook, after all, and even okay. if they can perform miracles, they ultimately bring disasters. What's the cost? Now, What's within the, the first hour... What do you mean by disaster? Also, I would say getting a miracle for a disaster is probably a good trade-off, depending on the disaster. What does that mean? Or so of the game, we, the player, and the crew of the Astral Express will learn that the Trailblazer has a Stellaron inside of their body, of all oh, places. Oh, that's not good. This is highly unusual, and while it seems to be pretty stable in there... It's too risky for the Trailblazer to stay in any one place. Oh shit, wait, so we're like a walking nuclear bomb? For too long. If the Celeron becomes unstable for any reason, they could bring destruction to any ship, space station, or planet that they happen to be on. I'm gonna be real? Why the f are we playing how I got reincarnated as an atom bomb? Dude, if I knew the MC was a nuclear warhead, I probably just wouldn't talk to them. I just, dude, I just, dude, I don't see the, I don't see the upside. Luckily, the nameless aboard the Astral Express are- Bro, they're literally just straight chilling next to it. These people are nuts. Quite experienced in dealing with the Stellaron, since simply having an unstable Stellaron within range of the train tracks can yeah. cause the train to come to a complete stop, and it won't move again until the offending Stellaron has been neutralized. But as long as the Stellaron okay. inside the Trailblazer's body is stable, the Astral Express can move unimpeded. If it becomes unstable, though, well, there are at least people around who can deal with it right away. All in all, the Astral Express is the safest place for the Trailblazer. I hate this thing. I've mentioned the Nameless Faction quite a bit, but I haven't really talked about them individually, so let me rectify this now because as yeah, members of this faction ourselves, we'll be spending a lot of time with them. So here's what I'm understanding right now. Himiko's important because she helped build the, the trains. The Trailblazer's ability is the ability to change path. They're also a nuclear bomb, and there are certain religions or religion-esque things that pr pr bring together like-minded people. There's a tree... That's imaginary, but it's real. There's also imaginary power that's also real. At the end of the tree, there's multiple universes. And the Honkai Star Rail universe and this universe are different, but they're similar. But they're, they're not the same. Okay, I get it. Same characters, but they're different. To start, we have the elegant scientist Himiko, also known as the one who found and repaired the Astral Express. And okay. that kind of makes her the boss. Cool. She might also look pretty laid back, but Welt says she's extremely driven and may be chasing a very big but unknown dream. Now, she does share looks and name with a popular character from Honkai Impact, but it's very important to note that they are not the same person. Who does? Next, we have Don Hung, who's- Wait, who ch who shares- uh, Bronya shares a name? Does Himiko share a name? Who's the Himiko from Honkai? Wait, what? Oh, shit! I- Wait, her ass died! Wait, this chick was crazy! Oh, I remember her now! She was crazy! Holy f I'm bad with names! Anyways- level-headed and clever. Man, my ass just realized she was dope like Bro, her story quest was so cool. But he kind of functions as the train's guardian. He says he's running from some... Wait, so then who are all the characters from Honkai Impact that have similarities with Honkai Star Rail? So, Bronya, Himiko, Seal... Is that it? Natasha Welt? Really? Real and true? Welt? There's a Welt in Honkai... Wait, this is the same guy. Wait, this is legit the same... Dude, dude, his alt is so crazy. Black, black hole into a fucking galaxy slice. That shit is crazy. Thing or someone, but he can't quite seem to remember what or who it was. So okay. he's never stayed in one place for too long until he came aboard the Astral Express. Hey, that's okay. That shit like happens. Like Hung, March 7th has a bit of a foggy past. She was found by the Nameless floating through space inside of a big chunk of weird magic ice. She doesn't Very remember pog? anything about her past, so they just named her after the day that they found her, which was March 7th. She's excitable, carefree, and at times a little bit careless, but you can She's always so count cute. on her for optimism and her trusty camera. Welt is among the oldest members of the Astral Express and is from the planet Earth, a planet that no one else seems to have heard of before. Long after the Honkai threat on Earth had been dealt with, Welt found himself forced to travel into space with a friend to deal with another threat. Unfortunately, his ship passed through a portal and broke down, stranding him until he got picked up by the Astral Express. He's searching for a way back home, though, but until then, he's just kind of chilling. Now, Welt is the only character who's actually from the world set in Honkai Impact, and so far, all references to that game are only relevant to his personal backstory. I think it's possible that... 
through Weld, we might learn more about the true nature of the events that occur in Honkai Impact, but I'm not convinced that any of those revelations will be impactful to the story of Star Rail. That said, if you want to learn more about him, most of his really interesting story beats and accomplishments are actually found in comic. Wait, why are we saying Otto? Otto's, Otto's not in the game. He's Luocha? No way. Form. So I'll leave some links to those in the description box if you're interested. And that leaves us with the player character, the Trailblazer. The Trailblazer has a pretty well-defined and sassy personality and does have voice lines throughout the game. Nah, bro, if if that's, um, dude, like some if that's how cute the chick is, I'm playing as her. You know what I mean? Like, I am playing as her if she's that adorable. Of Hoyo versus previous player characters. The Trailblazer is a character with no known past or family. And in fact, they appear to be completely- Oh, she's like Seer. Completely synthetic, created by a mysterious faction known as the Stellaron Hunters. During the first hour of the game, two Stellaron Hunters, Kafka and Silverwolf, infiltrate Herta's space station and create the Trailblazer as a vessel to house a Stellaron that was being kept by Herta. While their exact motives are unclear, the Stellaron Hunters seem to want the Trailblazer to board the Astral Express in order to reach the end of their story. Okay. That means. So with no past, no ties to any planet in particular, and a ticking eon bomb of unknown purpose in their body, the Trailblazer doesn't really have anything except that singular goal of reaching the end of their story to guide them. Now this is just speculation on my part, but the Astral Express was created by the Eon Akavili, and Akavili's origin planet is known as Pagana. Pagana is the location where the silver rails of the Astral Express begin and end. So if the Celeron Hunters want the Trailblazer to follow the path of the Trailblaze and reach the end of their story via the Astral Holy Express, shit. perhaps the Trailblazer's destiny lies in the final destination of Pagana. As for the reasons behind the journey and what they might find when they arrive at the final stop of the Astral Express, you'll just have to play the game and find out for yourself. I, however, will be covering Bro. the lore of this game in- Ashikai, good video, man. Yo, chat, go like, subscribe to Ashikai. That was a good-ass video. So, I mean, dude, the lore actually seems pretty sick. It actually seems interesting. And Ashikai does the amazing job of actually explaining the lore better than the majority of the game devs do themselves. That was a sick-ass video, man.